Okay, up next, we have more speakers from DOST. Uh, our topic will be a DOST developed technologies ready for adoption or commercialization, particularly on the three things. Number one, we have nano precipitated calcium carbonate. Ooh. If you guys don't know what calcium carbonate is, it's, you know what chalk is? So chalk is essentially calcium carbonate. And how do I know this? I'm actually a licensed pharmacist, <laughs> but it's not about me, it's about you. A uh, second item is a slimming cream. I need one. <laughs> and the third item is a natural analgesic balm. Analgesic means a pain reliever. So uh, you put it on your skin and then it relieves pain. All right. Uh, she has, she is a licensed chemist. Ooh, la, la. She has 35 years of experience on materials, science, research and development with field of specialization in characterization of nanomaterials. That is so interesting. Uh, ceramic and related materials, process product technique for nanotechnology and ceramics, traditional and advanced electronics, structural and bio ceramics. There's a lot of bio ceramics in this. Interesting. And operation evaluation of analytical equipment. Ladies and gentlemen, the supervising science research specialist for material science division of DOST, Industrial Technology. Technology Development Institute, a big round of virtual applause to Ms. Josefina Celorico, registered chemist. Good morning. Thank you, EJ, for that introduction. Uh, so, in behalf of the MSD research, Team of this nano precipitated calcium carbonate, I, we would like to express our gratitude for, in, for the organizer and the DOST NCR for giving us the opportunity to discuss and present to you the technology on nano precipitated calcium carbonate. As mentioned earlier, I'm the Josefina Arcelorico, a supervising science research institute. Uh, a supervi supervising science research specialist of the Department of Science and Technology of the Industrial Technology Development Institute. Next slide, please. So my presentation will contain three things. So first, I think uh, everybody must, um, I'll give a brief discussion of what is nanotechnology kasi baka yung iba hindi alam what is this nanotechnology. And next, I will give you what ITDI strategy on doing the R&D on nanotechnology, and I will be presenting as the nanoprecipitated calcium carbonate. So to begin with, so I, next slide, please. So I think, uh, I hope everybody is familiar with the term nanotechnology. So what is really nanotechnology? It is actually uh, it actually deals with the structure size between one to 100 nanometers in at least one dimension, and it involves developing or modifying materials or devices within that size. Actually, when you say nanomaterials, it is actually equal to a one billionth of a meter or one times 10 to the minus nine meter. So ganun siya kaliit. And it's about four times the diameter of an atom. Next slide, please. In the next slide, in this slide, you'll see some materials, the different particle size of some materials. So our natural hair is actually uh, 10, 10 microns, while our blood cell, your blood cells natin is eight microns. While as mentioned, uh, we have actually in our, Office the NITDI, we are we were able to develop already an uh, nanomaterials using our local resources, and one of them is a nanofiber with a particle size ranging from one micron to ten nanometer, and a natural clay coming from our natural resources that we process to make it into a nano clay has a structure equivalent to one nanometer. So. And you might be asking, what is the advantage? What was special about these nanomaterials? Next slide, please. 
So, the nanomaterial so has uh, physical and chemical properties that can be different at the nanoscale, such as in their properties in electronic, optical, mechanical, thermal, and chemical analysis. As you can see in this slide, if, if you have gold, if it's not in a nano, in a nano scale, gold is a yellowish gold. But once it's uh, processed into a nano, uh, nano size, the, the gold color becomes red. So what makes this product beneficial? So when you make your materials into a nano size, it makes your product lighter stronger, faster, smaller, and more durable. In the next slide, I will be showing to you that, you know, nanotechnology or nano-enabled products is already available in the market. And we are actually, maybe we are, you are not familiar or not aware Now you are using it. Meron na dun sa mga product na ginagamit natin. Such as, it can, nanotechnology can be used as an antimicrobial in bandages, the sabon, the surgical implements, and one of the materials that is being used is silver nanoparticles. Now, for sunscreen to protect us from the sun, yung pinapahid natin sa mukha, it has nanoparticles containing titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. Likewise, in our clothes, in the clothes we are wearing, we have some nanoparticles such as silver that give us an antimicrobial, a nano silica to make it water repellent, and you have some clothes that is to, sometimes you, they say you mention it's UV absorbing because it contains titania and zinc oxide nanoparticles. And likewise, when clothes, pag sinabi nilang anti static, it has a nanoparticle size of a tungsten dub tin oxide. Likewise, in sport equipment, it has also like sa, sa, sa golf, uh, sa, sa golf. It has a carbon nanotube. So these are just example of what is nanotechnology. And that now sample of nano-enabled products that is currently in the market. In the next slide, in the next slide, please. Now, in making nano, in making nanotechnology, we usually uh, nano composite is one of the one of the product of nanotechnology. So ano nga ba yung nanocomposite na yon? So actually, nanocomposite is a combination of two or more materials reinforcing phase filler and matrix space into which the filler exhibit at least one dimension in the nanometer scale. Actually, uh, the nanoprecipitated calcium carbonate that, are, that I will be presenting is one, can be one of the component in making a nanocomposite. So what does it do? It actually gives you a synergistic effect on the mechanical, electrical, optical, or even biological properties of the materials. So what is the advantage or what improvement is being done if you use nanocomposite? This will be shown in the next slide. So the following are the improvements due to the presence of nanomaterials. So actually, it increased the mechanical properties of the material in terms of tensile strength, stiffness, and toughness. It improved the gas barrier. Likewise, synergistic flame retardant additive, dimensional stability, ablation resistance, chemical resistance, and reinforcement. Now, we, since we are since in the advent of, of uh, nanotechnology, what is the strategy of ITDI in the in the process or in the conduct of R&D in nanotechnology? So, what actually we did is we tried to produce nanomaterials coming from locally available resources. And as you all know, mayaman ng Pilipinas sa mga natural resources like yung clay, yung silica yung limestone, and then yung uh, silica and cellulite. So because of that, ito yung na, uh, we studied on the year of processing limestone into a nanoprecipitated calcium carbonate. And this will be, the succeeding slides will be presented yung nanoprecipitated calcium carbonate. Next slide, please. So uh, this nanoprecipitated calcium carbonate uh, product, uh, 
Technology is actually granted already a UM with the number of 2-2018-050242. So what is calcium carbonate? As mentioned nga ni EJ, I, he knows that calcium carbonate is ang ano nun is in the check, sa chalk. But calcium carbonate, or sometimes we know it in layman's term, limestone. Kaya pag sinabi mong limestone is actually calcium carbonate, ang kanyang mineralogical or chemical name. So calcium carbonate is used commercially in several industrial applications such as fillers for plastic, rubber, in paper, in glass manufacturer, and other related industries. And there are three types of calcium carbonate in the market. One, we have a ground calcium carbonate wherein you, the limestone or the calcium carbonate that is, be, is mined from the mountain is being just ground lang, parang pinaprocess lang niyan to reduce the particle size. And the other one is a precipitated calcium carbonate. And the new, the new market for the disprecipitated calcium carbonate is the nano-precipitated calcium carbonate, wherein the particle size is in the nanoscale. Because sometimes when you precipitate calcium carbonate, it's not necessarily in the nano size. So this is the new, new market or new, I, a new market for calcium carbonate is this the nano precipitated calcium carbonate. Next slide, please. As mentioned, our country is very rich in deposits of limestone or calcium carbonate. And you can see here the map in the Philippines that it's all over the Philippines. You have deposits in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. And based on the Mines and Geoscience Bureau, we have a total reserve of 29 billion tons of calcium carbonate. So sa dami nun, ano ang pwede natin gawin for that? So ginawa namin, we, since nanotechnology is already in the market, at para hindi naman mauli, ang Philippines in the R&D of nanotechnology, we uh, actually process this ca uh, calcium carbonate into a nanomaterial. So what is really this nanoprecipitated calcium carbonate? Next slide, please. It is actually an innovative process of producing nanoprecipitated calcium carbonate from ind indigenous limestone minerals. Then these nanomaterials has a wide range of industrial application. Please, next slide, please. Next slide, please. This nanomaterial has a wide range of industrial application in the areas of paper making, rubber, plastic, pharmaceuticals, agriculture, foods, and uh, etc. It is widely used as a filler or additive that can improve the processing and enhance the, the proper properties. Therefore, what is its benefit? It gives you a high value. So from a, from a mineral deposit, it gives you a high value product since it's into a nanomaterial already. It can be used as an import substitute. And, it, and because this is a new technology, it can actually create new jobs in our country. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Now, during, the, during our study on this nanoprecipitated calcium pro production technology, we were able to control uh, the, we can control the quality of what is being produced by doing these three tests, X-ray diffraction analysis, wherein you will determine the mineral composition, whether the material really is limestone, and the particle size analysis by dynamic like scattering actually measure the particle size in nanometer. Since we are actually trying to determine if the product that we have is in a nano size, we need to determine it and we make use of this equipment, what's called particles I dynamic like scattering to determine whether the product you produce is already in a nanometer. We also make use of x ray fluorescence because we wanted to know under the uh, elemental composition of what is present in the material itself. Next slide, please. The next slide will show you the ano ba ang industry scenario or market sin scenario ng NPCC in the Philippines. So actually, uh, the Philippines is an importer of different types of limestone in the market, both, in, both 
uh, both the three types of uh, calcium carbonate. And you can see under the UN Commodity Trade Statistic the, uh, database, the import, it is increasing actually the import of this type of calcium carbonate. Next slide. In the next slide, I will be showing you the market for nano-calcium carbonate in the US by application for the year 2014 to 2025. And you can see that it has actually a, a NPCC or nano-precipitated calcium carbonate because it's too long, we shortened it into NPCC. You can see that it's increasing with a bigger uh, application actually in rub in the plastics as a filler. And then next is in the rubber, in the building construction and others. The next slide please will show you what we have developed so far in our laboratory. So we were able to produce pellets containing NPCC. And from these pellets, you can actually uh, process film that can be used for packaging. And, the, and aside from packaging, you can also use this NPCC uh, for making rainwater collection system. So this is the developed rainwater collection system of our institute containing NPCC. Next, please. Next, please. Uh, so this time I would like to present to you the financial viability of if you want to adapt this technology so the investment cost is around 1.2 million, already included the, the equipment, the working capital, and the uh, technology fee. And the net present value is around 1.3 million with an internal rate of return of 42% and a payback period of 5.93 years. In the next slide, I will be showing you the technology fee for if you want to adapt this technology and the technology fee is 314,000 pesos. And lastly, to end my presentation, I will be presenting the members of our team. And if you need more information, you can either contact us at these numbers or email our technology service division at psd at itdi.dosd.com. And with that, I'd like to end my my presentation and I would like to call, thank you for your attention. Josefina, thank you very much. Thank you. Can I just tell you that I really am so impressed that there are many, many women in the STEM fields here in the Philippines. You know, in America, when you say engineer, immediately in my head, it's a male. <laughs> but so far, in the many teams, and including you, a uh, chemist, uh, a leader, in fact, one of the leaders in the Department of Science and Technology here in the Philippines, that is really uh, amazing to me, and it's so inspiring. Uh, tell me, how long have you been working with the DOST? It says here it's a 35 years, so more or less. 35 years. Yes. I wanted to just Hello. highlight that part. Yes. Long time. Yes. Long time. So now you have a specialty in uh, nanoparticles. And uh, right now, like what you said, I agree with you. There is, uh, there is a trend for a need for nanoparticles. Have you heard of, of this uh, beauty product called the bentonite clay? Yes, actually. So in our, uh, aside from the nanoprecipitated calcium carbonate, we have also mm -hmm. studied on producing nanoclay. And one of them, and the component of that clay is actually a bentonite. Bentonite right. clay is the term, but if you look at the chemical composition or the mineral composition, it's bentonite. It's bentonite. And it, it, I know that you had to make it at a nanoparticle size for you to apply it on the skin, correct? Yes, correct. Right. So uh, also it's interesting to know that there is a surplus of calcium carbonate limestone yes. in the Philippines. <laughs> I saw the map, yes. there were so yes. many. You saw the map, yes, yes. So many, so we have to think of something so we make money. <laughs> yes, right? you're correct. Right, uh, in the makeup industry, do you think there's application for calcium carbonate? Like in, in let's say for eyeshadow, 
is there I calcium carbonate in the eyeshadow? A little bit? I'm not familiar with the cosmetic industry, but as mentioned mm. earlier, uh, there is a pharmaceutical application for nano-precipitated calcium carbonate. Maybe we can see if there is a calcium uh, need for a calcium carbonate for probably probably yeah. you, you mix it you mix it with a natural coloring right and then you can use it as a eyeshadow or blush. all right Josefina, such a pleasure meeting you today thank, thank you so much you. Thank uh, what what do you call it what do you call a chemist are you should i call you a doctor or like is, is are you technically a doctor or no just a chemist. Right, but look, just a chemist, uh, you know? Yes, we don't yes, have yes, titles. No titles. <laughs> we just have like, R, you have RCH at the end of your name and I have it RPH actually. Oh, yes, registered chemist right. for that, yeah. yeah. Yes. One day we'll have our own titles, you know? I'd call you, yes. hello chemist Josefina and then I'll be pharmacist EJ. Pharmacist EJ, yeah, <laughs> that would be nice. All right. Okay, thank you. Josefina, good morning. Thank you, we'll okay. see you later, okay? Bye-bye. Yes.